Good morning to you all. We just want to thank God this morning that God has given us this opportunity to worship him. And he, today is the beginning of uh, a new year in the Christian calendar. Is the first week of Advent. And we want to thank God as we commit our lives to the work of God in this coming year. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we now pause to acknowledge the things that have passed away in our lives in the coming days of his glorious season. We commit ourselves anew to watching and waiting for you. Today is Advent Sunday. Christmas is coming and we need to be ready. We need to prepare with more than party clothes and tins of thought. There is something very mysterious about what we face. Our God is a God of surprises. We must watch the signs to ensure that we are ready, that we are not caught unaware by his coming, this coming of Christ. Mighty God, your son came to earth as a time fragile human being. As we once more prepare to make the journey through Advent, we pray that you would not only be with anticipated joy of beholding a newborn, but also with awareness of where that new life will lead and what it might mean for us. Be with us, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. I'm going to ask Brother Ben to come and do the reading of the Word of God. Uh, from the book of Mark, chapter 13, verses 24 to 37. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, great to be here, and I hope you're having a blessed week. Uh, I feel blessed, so it's really good today. As Johnson mentioned, I'll be reading from Mark 13, 24 to 37. It's a really great scripture. And it's uh, about Jesus telling about his return. But in those days, following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds and the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you will know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But about that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned tasks, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. And this is the word of the Lord. Uh, well, I can't wait to hear what Johnson's got to say about this this week, so we'll get him back to... Here is message. Thanks, Johnson. Good morning to you once again. And uh, our theme for today is ready or not, here I come. Ready or not, here I come. Today is a very special day. We are preparing for a special guest. It is the first Sunday of Advent. Our celebration begins with the word Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Today's text is a strong eschatological Im imagery. Eschatology is has to do with the study of future or last things. 
Eschatology comes from the Greek root word ex eschatos, meaning last or furthest, is the study of the Bible sayings concerning the last things. It unfolds God's prophetic program of human beings, Israel, the church, and the whole created order. It talks about the sun and the moon darkened, the stars falling and powers shaking. There is a tendency to focus on the future and ignore the present. But a proper perspective on prophets will, one, purify our lives in the world now. Two, prepare us for what is to come. Three, promote sharing the gospel. Four, place our focus on eternal things. Five, prove God's faithfulness. And Titus 2 verse 11 and uh, 15 says, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of God, of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness, to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. These then are the things you should teach, encourage and rebuke with all authority. Do not let anyone despise you. This, it sounds like a text for the second coming of Christ rather than his birth. This is not what you would expect for the first Sunday of Advent. There must be some mistake. This passage is more appropriate for Lent than Advent. We are ready for the Annunciation, not the Apocalypse. We should be on our way to Bethlehem, not to Jerusalem. We are four weeks away from Jesus' birth, and this passage is two days away from Jesus' death. We are ready to buy gifts and to prepare for the baby's birth, but Mark will not let us. Mark 18, Luke 21 and Matthew 25, 24 are part of what is called Little Apocalypse. It is the happy hunting ground for those fascinated by the end time messages. So prophets, that is decidedly end time in perspective. Prophets, that defines what God planned for the end of humanity's era, the impending reign of Jesus Christ, and the Lord's final judgments. Aside from the book of Revelation, our Lord's discourse were replete with apocalyptic prophecies about the end times. All three borrow from Daniel's abomination of desolation for their apocalyptic imagery. Mark 13 figures prominently in books by doomsayers and by preachers who are more interested in the next world than in this world. So why is Mark 13 used for the first Sunday of Advent in the liturgical calendar? Because the message in this text is a Good word for us during Advent. Notice Mark stresses stay awake, be on your guard, be alert. And three times in the chapter, keep awake. If not, you miss the whole thing. Many and men will again miss it. Sometimes the consequences of not being ready are truly tragic. Consider the case of a young man and a young woman just divorced who look at each other through tear-filled eyes and confess, I guess I just wasn't ready for marriage. If only that had been their foresight and not their hindsight. Being ready is a good thing. Not being ready is a bad news. Of all the things there are that we need to be ready for, the most important of all is the day of the Lord. That is the judgment day. We need to be ready for it. In our gospel lesson, our Lord Jesus instructs all his disciples always to be ready for the day of his return. Take heed, Jesus warned. Watch, be alert, stay awake. Don't, caught, don't get caught sleeping. Always be ready for that day when I come back for you. So Jesus is coming back. The same Lord whom you was born in a bed in Bethlehem, who lived and died on the cross in payment for the world's sin, then come back to life again and ascend into heaven, is coming back. He's coming back. At the ascension, when Jesus returned to heaven, two angels said to his disciples who watched him go, This same Jesus, who you see taken up from you into heaven, shall return like manner 
in Acts chapter 1 verse 11. Over and over again, the Bible tells us the good news that Jesus is coming back. And each time it also tells us to be ready for his appearing. Our Savior explained why he's coming back. In John 14 verse 3, I go to prepare a place for you. When I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come back again and take you to myself. That way I am, maybe also be. So Jesus is coming back to take us to himself and to eternal home. So when that will happen, when exactly will it happen? Nobody knows. Jesus said, of that hour, that day, no one knows. Only the Father knows. In Matthew 24, verse 36. So the Savior continued, always be ready because I am coming at an hour you do not expect. In Matthew 24, verse 44. Which means, he's coming, nobody knows. Nobody knows. In describing the sudden and unexpectedness of his return, Jesus compares the day of his coming to lightning which burst off the sky without warning. In Matthew 24, verse 7. And to the arrival of a thief who always comes when nobody thinks he will. In 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 2. So we don't know when, but we do know that Jesus is coming. You will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds, Jesus promised, Matthew 24, 6, verse 64. Everyone will see the Son of Man coming in cloud with power and great joy, he said. In Luke 21, verse 27. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. In Revelation, verse 1, 7. So Jesus is coming back. It would be good to us to be ready for him. Of all the worst possible times, this would be the worst of all to say, I guess I just wasn't ready. In Revelation, Jesus speaks to John in a very visual way about the agents of always being prepared. What does he say in John, in Revelation 16, verse 15? Behold, I come as a thief, he told John. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his clothing so that he will not have to walk around naked and ashamed in public. Don't get caught with your pants down, Jesus said. Be ready, be prepared. Jesus is coming. So you need to be ready and prepared. So the way to be ready is to be about the Lord's business. To be doing what God wants us to do. Jesus compared it to a man going away on a trip and leaving his servants in charge of all his business. So the man who went away is Jesus when he ascended into heaven. So the servants he left behind to carry on his business, we are the ones. All who believe in him when we are about his business, we'll be ready. If we ignore his business, we'll be unprepared. So in the Gospel of Luke, our Lord Jesus spoke about this very, in a very blunt way, precise and to the point. Watch yourselves. He said, don't become so occupied with the things in this world that day comes on you suddenly and finds you unready for it. For it will come like a trap on all people all over the world. So we are being asked to be ready. Be on watch and pray always that you will have strength to go safely through all this. That will happen and to stand before the Son of Man in Luke 21 verse 34. So don't get so wrapped up in the things of this world. Jesus admonished him. So the Savior gave us a perfect illustration. Remember the days of Noah. He said, back in those days before the flood, everybody was eating, drinking, and marrying and giving in marriage. They have no thought of anything. No one was doing those things, but at the same time, he was also building the ark. He was doing God's work for him. When it became to rain, he got into his ark with his family and was saved. Everybody else missed the boat. Watch, be ready. So to be ready does not mean to separate ourselves from life. Or to climb up on some mountain, some place, or just wait. No. We need to continue living. But as we do all that we do, we do it as God's people. His servants who carry out his business as we wait for him to return. In Matthew 24, verse 8. So what are we to do? 
Christ has called us to reach out to the world. Where do we begin? We begin with ourselves. We need to continue and ask ourselves what we can do to make ourselves more appealing to the world outside. What can we do as Christians to make ourselves more appealing to the world so that we can reach out? This is a tremendous, important message for us, the best people to hear. Soon Christmas will be upon us. As we make ourselves ready for Christmas, what will we do? What will we do? Well, we have to, sh to shop for presents, plan parties, send Christmas cards, mail out of our town gifts, hide the presents from the children, get a Christmas tree, decorate it, put up the lights outside the house. We have all kinds of things to do. But having done them all, we'll be ready to celebrate God's tremendous gift of his son to be our savior. That is the most important thing. Where will God's work have been done in all that other stuff? When we are preparing all these things, where is God's work? We will also set aside some special time to pray and to meditate and to share with each other the wonder of God's great love for us. A love that God great gave us only his only son. So that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Or we will get to Christmas and be so tired by then that we can't even sing joy to the world. Because we are now so tired. Most people get ready for Christmas by spending too much money and exhausting themselves. Then the good news of God's wonderful gift doesn't do anything for us, for them, because they are too worn out to hear it. Even on Christmas Day, they don't even time to worship God. Because they are thinking of eating their cakes and other things. So they are putting God outside of their own homes, outside of their own lives. Jesus was right. The world is a trap for us because we got so wrapped in it. That's why he died. Jesus died so that the world might be crucified to us and we to the world. In Galatians 6 verse 14. He died so that we might be in the world but not of the world. That is the real issue. He died to keep us unspotted by the world. I have chosen you out of the world, Jesus said in John 15 verse 19. We don't know how to get ready for Christmas. We will be ready for him when he comes back to us. We will be if we are about to do, do the Lord's business. And his business is this, that we confess our sins and believe that he is our savior who died for all and that we live no longer for ourselves but for him who for our sake died and was raised in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 15. We are ready when we have a piece of the rock. What I mean is he's the rock. Not insurance, not our insurances, but God, our rock of refuge, our redeemer. Behold, I come quickly, Jesus said. Hold tightly to what you have. The gift God has given us. He has given us his son. So no one takes your crown in Revelation 3 verse 11. Hold tightly to what God has given us. Hold tightly to Jesus Christ. The way children hang on for dear life to those special presents they get. Taking them to bed with them and never letting them get out of their hands. I've seen kids when receiving presents. They even take these presents to their bedrooms. Not only their bedrooms, into bed with them. Because they treasure them so much. The way those presents make all the others they got seem like nothing. That's the way we are to clean for all we are worth to Jesus Christ alone and not to be sidetracked from him. St. Paul was ready for the Lord's return. He confessed, for me to live is Christ. That's the way to be ready. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Are we ready for Christ's return? He's coming. Red or not, here I come. Jesus is ready. Scripture tells us the day of the Lord is near. We are ready also by grace through faith. When we live in him, who lived and died and rose again for us in him and for him. The one who is coming to take us to himself. Amen to that church. We need to be ready. Whether you are ready or not, Christ is coming. 
That is a true thing. I don't know the date. I don't know the time. I don't know the day. But my Lord is coming very soon. That you should know. So be ready. Be on guard. Be alert. Don't sleep. It's not time for us to be sleeping. It's time for us to be awake as Christians. We, we seem to be sleeping. We, we, we seem to have no agents in proclaiming the word of God, in sharing the word of God. Lord, help us this morning as we listen to this message, which helps us to start the beginning of a new year as we are going into Christmas. Be with us, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. Gracious God, transform our confused hopes into joyful expectation that we may not wait for your passively with an active stillness of heart, confident that your promises are true and your peace lasting. Cleanse and invigorate our waiting this Advent and bless our receiving and our responding. Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us take our offer as we thank God this beginning of the year, this first Sunday of the year, we are bringing that you have given us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we bring our offering before you, may you bless this offering, Father. Bless it so that it can be used for the expansion of your kingdom. Father, you have given us a lot. You have given us plenty. We have a lot. And we just want to come back to you and say thank you. So bless our offering, Father. Bless every one of us. Those who have dedicated their offerings to you. May you bless them, Father, as we continue to minister and share the word of God with you. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let us receive grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen.